It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Welcome to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International with Dr. E.K.D. Quick. With your Bible in hand and your heart open to learn, let's join the teaching in progress. This is the teaching on Who is Jesus Christ? Part 3. Point number three, the key events of the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. This scripture speaks of the crucifixion the resurrection and the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am he that liveth, speaks of the resurrection, and was dead, speaks of the crucifixion. And behold, I am alive forevermore, that speaks of his ascension. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4 state, Brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, crucifixion, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, resurrection, according to the scriptures. These key events in Revelation chapter 1 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 are not exhaustive, but they're a basic foundation for the events in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Point number 3A. Key event, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. The birth of the Lord Jesus Christ is called the first advent or the first coming of Christ. Jesus Christ, as we learned previously, has always existed. This is Jesus Christ coming down from heaven as spoken of in Hebrews chapter 10 and wrapping himself in flesh in order to die for the sins of the world. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 proclaims, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. Matthew chapter 1 speaks of the birth of Christ, verses 18 through chapter 2, verse 15. This birth of Christ coming into the world was first proclaimed in prophecy in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This scripture is called in the circle of the church, the proto ulagarion or the first gospel. It speaks about Jesus Christ that will come and destroy Satan and suffer for the sins of the world. Bruise thy head speaks of destroying the devil, and thou shalt bruise his heel speaks of suffering on the cross of Calvary. The enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, is the struggle between the children of light and the children of darkness. The kingdom of light against the kingdom of darkness. 
the children of the Lord and the children of the wicked one. Galatians chapter 4 declares, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. The birth of Christ, called the first advent, his first coming, in order to wrap himself in flesh and die for the sins of the world. Point 3b. Key event, the death of Christ. The death of Christ speaks to the sin penalties being paid and righteousness exchanged. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 14 through Isaiah chapter 53 speaks of Jesus Christ's death and suffering. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 declares, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Through the suffering of Jesus Christ, the sin penalty was paid. Through the suffering of and death of Jesus Christ, the consequences of sin were paid. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 6 declares, I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair, and I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Jesus Christ's suffering was so grotesque that he was unrecognizable. They plucked off his beard, they smited him, and they spit upon him, which was evident of mankind's rejection of the Messiah. Through this suffering, he was able to pay the price for the consequences of sin. Sin has consequences. Sin can cause a broken heart. Sin can cause worry. Sin can destroy families. There are consequences to sin. And through these consequences, we need healing and restoration. Jesus Christ, through this suffering, was able to pay the price for the consequences of sin. And as a result, by his stripes, we are healed. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross paid the price for sin, paid the penalties for sin, and allowed us to receive the righteousness of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 21 states, For he hath made him to be sin for us. Jesus Christ made a sin offering for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. As we lay our sins at the feet of the cross, God grants us in exchange the righteousness of Christ. God no longer sees us in sin, but he sees us through a veil of blood, trusting in the blood, and in the righteousness of Christ. Point number three, C. Key event, the burial of Christ. The burial of Christ speaks to death closure. Individuals are only buried if they have been pronounced dead. The burial of Christ speaks to the guarantee that Jesus Christ fully died for the sins of the world and is represented as death closure. 
This refutes the false teachings that Jesus Christ was only unconscious or that Jesus Christ was only in a coma and somehow revived himself later through the help of his disciples. The burial of Jesus Christ instead teaches death closure. It teaches that death was confirmed by the burial of Jesus Christ. This burial of Jesus Christ also teaches that the old man has died and the new man is risen in Jesus Christ. Scripture teaches, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. This burial also teaches that we shall rise one day with a brand new body in the Lord Jesus Christ. Point 3D, key event the resurrection. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ teaches power over life and power over death. The resurrection was always foretold and by faith looked upon by all believers in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. The book of Genesis chapter 22 teaches that Abraham was told to sacrifice his only begotten son Isaac, but that through faith, knowing that God would raise him from the dead, trusted in the resurrection. Scripture teaches this in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 17 through 19. By faith Abraham, when he was tried or tested, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure." This is stating that God declared to Abraham to sacrifice Isaac on the altar. This son Isaac was the promise that the Messiah would come through him. So Abraham had to believe by faith that God would raise up Isaac from the dead in order to fulfill the promise that the Messiah would come through the seed of Isaac. This resurrection faith is also echoed in the life of Moses. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 25 through 27. Scriptures declare Moses choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. The saints in the Old Testament and we saints in the New Testament, both we walk by faith and not by sight. The same faith that the Old Testament saints had looked forward to the cross, forward to the Redeemer, and forward to the Messiah, we look back with that same faith, back to the cross, back to the Redeemer, back to the Messiah. The resurrection of Jesus Christ speaks of power over life and power over death. Jesus declared, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. 
This resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees that we shall be raised up from the dead to live with the Lord forever. Point 3E. Key event. The ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. The ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ is the exaltation of Christ. The ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ is the resurrection confirmation of the Lord Jesus Christ. The ascension confirms that the resurrection was real because the ascension was seen by hundreds of individuals. The resurrection is confirmed in scripture as scripture teaches that over 500 individuals at once saw the risen Savior walk the earth for 40 days. The ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ is the resurrection confirmation as individuals saw him ascend into heaven in great exaltation, confirming that he actually rose from the dead. Luke chapter 24 verse 51 proclaims, And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Acts chapter 1 verse 9 declares, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. The ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ teaches us that he is no longer in the crib or manger. The ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ confirms that he is no longer on the cross as some depict on a crucifix. The ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ is the glorious exaltation of the Lord Jesus Christ and confirms that the resurrection did exist. Point 3F, key event, the rapture of the church. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 17 teach that the church, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, will be taken up to be with the Lord forever, in a moment and a twinkle of an eye. Verse 17 says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The rapture of the church is an event in scripture that has no guaranteed timeline. The rapture of the church can happen at any moment. The rapture of the church is a great equalizer when it comes to those who proclaim they believe the Lord. The rapture of the church will happen in a moment's notice And only individuals who are faithful in the Lord, living for the Lord, shall be taken up with the Lord. Individuals that are not living for the Lord, but are in a backslidden state and have strayed away from the Lord Jesus Christ, will be left behind. The rapture of the church is the great equalizer. The rapture of the church will determine who is truly faithful and who is not. There is no time to say the sinner's prayer when the rapture takes place. Individuals must be faithful, must be waiting for the Lord with loving trust and serving the Lord. The word rapture is not found in the English, but it is found in the Latin and in the Greek scriptures. It is the words caught up in the English, found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It is from the word harpazo, which means to be seized with force. 
It is the snatching up of the church who is waiting for the Lord in loving trust and service and will be caught up with the Lord to be with the Lord forever. The rapture of the church takes place before the great tribulation and the rise of the Antichrist. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 9 states, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. God would not have his bride go through the great tribulation, suffering the wrath of God, for we shall be delivered from that just before the great tribulation and the rise of the Antichrist. Upon the rapture, the church will stand before the Lord, the judgment seat of Christ, and at that time receive crowns based on our faithfulness in Christ. Luke chapter 14 verse 14 confirms this by stating that we shall be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. When the rapture takes place, we shall stand before the Lord and receive our crowns based on our faithfulness. And then Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5 teach that in simultaneous unison, we shall all bow down and cast our crowns at His feet upon the glassy sea. The rapture of the church will happen at any moment here in the last days, and I pray that individuals will be ready. Point 3G, key event, the second advent, or the second coming of Christ. This second advent, or second coming of Christ, takes place at the end of the Great Tribulation. This second advent or second coming of Christ takes place at the Battle of Armageddon, seven years after the rapture and at the conclusion of the Great Tribulation. This is a time when we as the saints of God will come back with the Lord to put down the armies fighting against God at the battle of Armageddon. God, according to Revelation chapter 19, will end this battle in a moment's notice. Jude chapter 14 verse 15 is one of many scriptures speaking of the second coming of Christ. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This second advent is spoken of in Zechariah, in the book of Matthew, in the book of 2 Thessalonians, and throughout the Old Testament scriptures. This second advent takes place at the end of the Great Tribulation and ushers in the beginning of the thousand year reign of Christ on the earth called the Millennial Reign. After the millennial reign, this universe will fold up and the great white throne judgment will take place and God will judge the wicked. According to Revelation chapter 20, these key events that we have spoken of, the birth of Christ, His death, burial, resurrection, ascension, the rapture of the church, and the second coming of Christ are not exhaustive in his key events, but lay a foundation and explain his main purposes 
in the intervention of mankind, in the salvation of mankind, and the judgment of mankind. This is the teaching on who is Jesus Christ, part three. Thank you for listening to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International. LCMI is a Christian non denominational teaching ministry based solely on the Holy Bible, dedicated to pleasing God, glorifying Jesus Christ, and ensuring that the Bible is the foundation in everything this ministry proclaims and endorses. For more information, log on to our website at lifechangingministries.com. Please join us again next time for more Bible teaching. And remember, we have the victory through Jesus Christ.